is Sam Karaka. I'm the CEO of EGM Securities, FX Trading as FX Pesa. Um, over the years, um, I would look at uh, maybe World Dynamic because uh, what I've been able to do and achieve from my very young career as a guy was really trying to build myself uh, through hard work and pushing for what I believe is what would make someone stand out. Working from a junior accountant to audit to banking, Islamic finance, corporate banking, investments and therefore I've done quite a bit of things outside the norm including also social investments working with institutions like churches and NGOs to build facilities, places of worship and centers for children like the children's center and the old things for people. So it's been quite a bit so I would look at it from being very dynamic and trying to grow as much as I can and impact society from that perspective. I think tenacity and hard work is what I learned from a very young age. You know, from primary all the way to high school, you know, ensuring that you become the best in everything you did. So that has kept me focused, trying to build myself, getting to learn, being very authentic and agile. You know, very flexible to an extent where you are very accommodative and adaptive to changes. You look at the environment today. Where I am in business today is not where we were uh, 10 years ago. And therefore, the, the dynamics that keep changing in the, in the global world today is just ensuring that you remain on top of it. You're able to adjust, you're able to, to push yourself a little bit harder uh, and make sure you get the best version of yourself. So for me, that has been my try. And that keeps me motivated and going. I want to get the best version of Sam. And the only way to do that is to keep growing, you know. And by growing is also releasing myself into others, you know, trying to replicate some, you know. Uh, I, I work with a young team, and therefore, one of the things I would say and would look to, to, to do in a lot more is mentoring them, empowering them to become the sum of today and tomorrow. You know, getting them to do good things in their own way, but where I can influence, because everyone is different. But the, the point is at the end of the day, are we getting the results? Are we growing? Are we developing a team that will take this country, this business forward in the next 10 years, 20 years? The Kenya economy is still young. There's a lot of potential. And we who've been there ahead need to mentor the young guys to get to where we are in the, in the nearest time possible. I think the, the key thing is having worked in very diverse industries. Uh, like I mentioned, I started in audit, in a Christian auditing firm. So the Christian ethos, not just from home where I come from, where I'm, I'm brought up in a Christian family where my parents are church, you know, church leaders and staff and pastor, but even going to my first job where we used to have morning devotion every morning. You know, it brings you close to, you know, to, to Christianity and stuff. And as you go to work, the kind of clients you meet are similar. You know, uh, NGOs, churches were the kind of people I audited in my first job. Uh, and then went to, now moving to the financial services sector, which was my dream, dream, dream uh, sector. I always wanted to work in the financial services sector, and I thank God that I've been able to be there now, close to 18 years. Uh, from one to another. So moved to finance in an insurance company, then moved to investment management in the next insurance company, which was Britain, was there for quite a number of years, transformational, I moved to equity bank, and that was most exciting. So what has shaped my career now is around the ethics, how to do the right thing, because you, when you're mentored by people like Benson or Dr. Dari and, and Dr. James Mwangi, you will pick some good vibes, you know. These are people who we work with and watched how they do business and yeah, we've been able to learn from them and many others, of course, that you read in books. Uh, but the, the point here is what motivates me and how do I see myself going forward is looking at how we can grow the industry. I was privileged to be part of the team that moved equity, building society to equity bank in 2004. And that was an exciting project, you know. The first one to be moved from a, 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 a building society to a commercial bank. And, and then went on to start the British American Asset Management Firm, again from scratch going to set, get clients. The first client comes in the second one and you grew 
it to one of the big, big companies. Then moved on to start the Alpha African Bank, the first Sharia compliant bank in Kenya. I was not Muslim, I'm not Muslim, but I was in the, you know, in, in my hands were dirty, getting to understand Sharia banking and getting it to the people. So those kind of exciting opportunities have kept me going. Now I'm running FX Pesa, again the first one to be licensed by CMA, you know. And talking to young people, you know, encouraging them to grow, to make a living, both side income and main income, mainstay from trading commodities, from trading indices, and also, of course, financial literacy. So there are quite a number of things that keep me going. I mean, there's no dull moment uh, in my life, I can assure you. I'm very relational, and that comes from when I was very young. I was able to interact uh, with the people who were much older than me, younger than me. And that has helped me over the years, where even as I lead my team, I try and create that rapport that this guy could be the CEO of the company, but he's easy to go to. You open door policy, come in, let me share your, share your ideas with me, let's see what we can work on, let's see what we can improve. Very open to ideas, I work with an excellent team that challenges me, you know. Yeah, let's do this, let's do this, let's go. I challenge them, can we do this better? Can we improve on this? Why is this not working? That for me has been a great success in terms of how I, I, I empower my young team to be better versions of myself, to a place where, you know, I'll be happy to let them run the business and, and they take a back seat in future. That's what we want to do. We want to empower the young people. So that really keeps me going and very motivated. A CEO is just a captain, you know, it's like football, right? Uh, you have a captain, but everyone else is playing. And if one lets the ball down, the team down by just getting that goal in and you scored and you lost, then that's it. So it's about building a team, building collaborative uh, environment, uh, leaning on each other's shoulders. They, everyone has very good ideas. Given an opportunity, given an opportunity, everyone can do the best they can. So one of the things I, I propose to do in, in, that, in that CEO role is not just to empower them, but to motivate, you know, cheer them on, cheer them on. You know, let's go, let's go, we can do this, you know. And, and that uh, being relational has helped because it doesn't matter whether it's a lady at the reception or the cleaner or my, the other directors on the board, the chairman, the shareholders, we are able to create a relationship where it's a win-win, you know. And, and because we are all here to serve the client, if the client comes first, then all of us converge and meet the desires of our clients. Of course, it's a sector that is very young. Being five, almost five years as a Kenyan entity, as the first one, it's pretty young. So we are just barely scratching the surface. So going forward, I, I see us doing a lot more in terms of not just my role, but as I mentor a lot more young people. In my office, I have about 60, 70, 60 people in the office who I'm working with, and they are all young. The generation is what? 20 average, 27, 28 years old. That's a team I'm pushing. Yeah, so it's 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 very exciting. Yeah, just empowering them, seeing them succeed. Uh, people who came in and in three years they moved from a junior junior position to head of a department in three years. I mean, it's and that is across whether it's marketing, whether it's in sales, uh, whether in back office operations. I have team members who came in as newbies, first job, they have not worked anywhere and they are now heads of department in a span of the businesses last five years in Kenya. So that tells you around how do you motivate, how do you keep, how do you train, how do you keep the team energized and charged to, to achieve great heights. I do not too many things. <laughs> I wish I could play golf <laughs> a lot more, uh, once in a while, but you know, I think there's hardly time to do that. But I spend a lot of time cycling, I cycle a lot, I walk, I cycle, and I have that teenage boys, so we challenge each other. Uh, when I'm with them, I behave like them eh? and motivate them. So it's been very, very exciting just, even just being out. And of course with my team, like I said, the average age is 20, 20, 28, 26, 28. Those are young people. So they have games, so you, you know, every so often you'll have a game night, a game night in the office, and you compete amongst each other, it's a lot of fun. You know, uh, it's a lot of fun working with the, the young guys. So that keeps me going. Yeah, and of course, I read a lot uh, because to stay ahead, you have to get to know what are the trends, what's going on everywhere around the world, new developments, products, what can we do, what can, how can we grow, how can we expand, what new regions do we want to go into. So it's not all about work, 
There's a little bit of a bit of the social aspects as well. I served in the church. I've served in the church for many years uh, as an elder. So I do many other things on the community side. I mentor young children, young boys and girls in terms of investment and uh, uh, wealth creation. Uh, no, because I'm very open and relational. I've let everyone know what I'm good at. Yeah, because I mix with everyone, right? Yeah, so if it's uh, you know, there's a young baby who's been born in the family, I'm there holding the baby like it's mine. So, so you, it's it's such, that's the way it is, right? Yeah, when you're relational, you actually you, you open yourself up to everyone to see you and to get to learn or who service. There's a book by, of course, a very famous, yeah, Kiyosaki and uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad. But there's one he's, he's pushed after that, I think, uh, around how we school our children around money and where, you know, the A the students and the C students and really the C students and the A students. That, that's on my table now and it's pretty exciting just to think about it that way. Now that I have uh, teenage boys, two boys who are teenage, the point here is, I see, now what I'm reading in the book is what I actually see them doing. These guys want to make some, some back, they're in college and school, but you can get the sense that we didn't have at that age around, you know, I can make money from commercializing, maybe dog rearing and selling. One is doing rabbits, the other one is doing dogs. And, 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 and these guys are just, you know, in teenage. Yeah, so, they, so for me, when I look at that book and I see what these young guys are doing, now I take a lot more interest in them and in other young men and women who want to develop and grow. Those are opportunities we didn't have. So that's what I'm saying. It, it really opens up your mind when you look at a book and it has value. So that particular one, of course, the richest man in Babylon. I think that also has been a good a good read over the years. Going back, of course, these other motivational books all over town uh, are, are there and they're available. But I think there are those that stick with you. You know that don't go too far. Every, every so often you come back and, and look at it. And of course, good to great and books like those by Jim Collins, I think, have also been inspirational uh, to me over the years. And of course, how to influence friends, you know, are also. How do you get business from people you know? And how do you get business from people you know? You know, the people you know, like take a back seat first. And the people you don't know are the ones who come and say, oh, that sounds like a good idea, Sam. Let's try it. But the ones who know and have been there are like, yes, let's, let's see how we can grow this over time. So, it's been exciting just looking at books and magazines, a lot of articles, and uh, even from your media house, there's quite a lot of publications that you guys are doing on Business Daily and the Nation Media, the Nation newspaper, both weekends and during the week, weekdays. So there's a lot of material going up. I, I think what we need to encourage our young people is to also research a lot. Uh, find out, you know, you don't have to go and make a mistake. Read from those who are before you have written, Go out and look for information. There's a lot on, on the internet, good stuff that can add value, and we're able to tap into this as we go forward. My biggest advice to the younger generation would be: be yourself, be real, be true to yourself, do the right thing, but more importantly, do the right thing right. It's not just about doing the right thing, but do the right thing right, and, and that is a philosophy I would try to live by. It encourage the people I speak to. Uh, because when I was very, when I started working, uh, I got my first check and I said I told my mom, you know, after working for 30 days this is what I get. And said, yeah, yeah man. But during our days we couldn't even talk about what you're talking about. So take what you have, work diligently and God will bless you. So I would encourage the same words to the young people today. Work diligently, do the right thing but more importantly, do it right. You, if you do that, it doesn't matter. It will come full circle. You will get the rewards of hard work and hard work pays. You, you, one may feel like it's taking too long, but eventually something will just be like, wow. So I'm a testimony that it works. Hard work pays. Let's keep the focus. So any young man listening, I would encourage you watching, I would encourage you to actually put in, put, do, do you the time. There are no shortcuts. Wealth is not created in a short run. Everything is clear at long term. Yes, there could be ways of trading and you can make some. But wealth will be created. And especially generational wealth that one would leave to their children and children's children is created over the long term. Samuel Karaka, this is the captain of the industry.